We're not going to explore the scenery of France, but tada! Welcome back to my channel, guys. I'm Olivia Angelina, and here I am. I'm going to explain to you about French opera in Jean Baptiste Lully era. So, without any further ado, let's get started. By around 1700, Italian opera was flourishing in every corner of Western Europe, from Italy itself, especially Rome, to Naples. Venice, Austria, Germany, and England, except France. Although the French long resist Italian opera, they finally established a national French opera in the 1670s under the August patronage of Louis XIV with special features that persist for a century. Two powerful traditions influenced French opera the sumptuous and colorful palette which had flourished at the royal court ever since the late 16th century, and the classical French tragedy represented best by the works of Pierre Cournel and Sean Racine. Jean Baptista Lully, or Giovanni Battista Lully, as the name originally spelled, was born in Florence on 28 November 1632. In 1646, he came to Paris as in 1652. Lully took part both as dancer and composer in a ballad at the Tuileries, the Masque de la Foy Saint-Germain. Later, in the 1653, he became a member of King Louis XIV's String Orchestra, or Fonkia du Violon du Roy. He composed instrumental music and dance pieces that were added to production of Italian operas. He also provided overtures, dance, and vocal numbers in both the Italian and French styles for court palettes. Lully became the virtual musical dictator of France when a 1672 royal privilege gave his Academy Royal de Music a monopoly in the medium of song drama. Lully has a libertist and his name is Jean-Philippe Quinault. He provides composer with mythological thoughts adorned by frequent long interludes for divertisements of dancing and choral singing. Lully adopts the style of Italian recitative to the French language and French poetry, since neither the rapid recitative was equal nor the quasi-melodic arioso of Italian opera suit the rhythms and accents of the French language. In the earlier tragedy and music from Cadmus at Hamion through Isis, they are of the kind referred to as ordinary or simple recitatives which simply follow the natural rhythm of the declamation, with fluctuating meters, limited or no ornamentation, save for occasional flourishes on words such as Cloa and Victoa, and instrumental support provided by continuo. In moments of high dramatic tension, the recitative will be sustained by a small instrumental ensemble comprising a few strings, theorbos, and harpsichord, known as the petit cue. The vocal distribution of Lully's works compared to Italian operas at the time sounds rather modern. No castrati, tenor voice for the young hero, and basses for kings or villains. Beginning with Proserpine, Lully had in his troupe one of the first French operatic stars, Marielle Rosoa. She premiered some of his major female roles and appeared in revivals of earlier works. She was especially a famous armaid. In what would later be called recitative simple, Lully shifted the matter between duple and triple to accommodate the accented syllables of the first. This recitative was frequently interrupted by a more song-like, uniformly measured style recitative show whose accompaniment has more deliberate motion. 
In the example of Armite's monologue in Enfoy Ile Emma Poussons, illustrate this mixture of styles where the scene begins in the unmeasured recitative symbol until a six measure transition in the measured style, but not shown in here, leads to an A in minute meter. In this monologue, Armite sings in an unmetrical rhythm, punctuated by rest that not only complete its line, but are also used dramatically, as in the passage where Armite hesitates between uncertainty and resolve, as shown in the measures 36 until 42. I think that's all from me. Thank you for watching, and I hope you guys can learn from my video. Au revoir. Goodbye.